My name is Alexa Montgomery and I am a bio student here at the University of Oregon. This is a project I worked on last year in the environmental engineering lab at Oregon State University. I had a ton of fun and I am so excited to see where I will be able to take this in the future as I plan to develop it further. So in the study of the potential of anaerobic digestion of human waste for the production of methane gas as a reliable energy source on Mars is explored. The goal of the research that I conducted was to evaluate the effects of the gases of Mars' atmosphere on the survivability and metabolic activity of methanogens in wastewater sludge. So in proposed future missions, NASA intends to send a team of astronauts to Mars to explore its surface for a prolonged period of time. Long-term exploratory missions, however, meet a vast number of logistical difficulties, two being waste management and efficient energy use. So today, waste during space missions has to be dried and stored for delivery back to Earth and then proper disposal. To avoid the cost and inefficiency of this system, advanced technologies in waste reduction and reclamation will need to be developed. While solar panels provide a renewable energy source, sunlight is also inconsistent. Energy shortages are common due to environmental stresses. So again, I was just looking at, can we take waste that we'll be producing on these missions and use it as a supplement, supplemental energy source to what we already are planning to use? So to do this, media bottles containing samples of wastewater sludge from the environmental engineering lab were sparged with either pure nitrogen gas, if they were in the control group, or a mixture of the gases found on the surface of Mars, if they were in the experimental group. The gases in the Martian gas mixture can be found on the poster in the red box titled Experimental Bottle Setup to the left of the conclusion section. So over the span of 15 days, the biogas produced in each bottle was measured three times a week using a glass syringe. So this was done by inserting the needle of the gas syringe into the rubber septa of each bottle and allowing the pressure of the produced gases, which were methane and carbon dioxide mix, to press upward on the syringe until equilibrium was established. Following this, the gas collected was then purified with sodium hydroxide, and the remaining methane was then measured in the same way. So there's a diagram of this down in the bottom left-hand corner of the poster that shows a step-by-step -step, um, diagram of this process. After 15 days of going through this process, the data collected showed approximately a 50% reduction in the volume of biomethane produced by bacteria in the experimental group. Overall, however, the total volume of mixed biogas produced remained roughly the same. The difference in gases produced by the groups is likely due to the experimental group being impacted by the unfavorable Mars environment more so than the competing organisms responsible for the production of carbon dioxide. As demonstrated by the results, the methanogens experienced greatly reduced metabolic activity. Oxygen, though less than 1% of the simulated Martian environment, is a probable cause of this phenomenon and would allow for other competing bacteria to consume an increased volume of organic waste. Overall, the results indicate that methanogens are able to withstand living in an atmospheric environment composed of the gases of Mars' atmosphere in the accurate ratios. Additionally, not only do the results prove methanogen survivability, but they also suggest a biomethane yield is possible of approximately 50% of that which is normal in anaerobic systems with favorable conditions, an exciting and promising find. While the results of this research prove methanogen survivability in the gases of Mars' atmosphere, there are still many aspects of the Martian environment which could be detrimental to the health of methanogens and have not yet been explored. Topics for further investigation include, but are not limited to, reduced atmospheric pressure, low temperatures, and the effects of Martian soil, primarily iron oxide dust, on methanogenic bacteria. Additionally, anaerobic digesters such as these may also be a viable option on other surfaces such as the Moon Titan and are another avenue I intend on pursuing. Thank you so much for having me and for listening. I'm looking forward to answering any questions or clarifying anything in the 2020 Undergraduate Research Symposium interviews that will be happening later this week.